All right, um, okay, and I'm here again. Every time I try and do this, something goes wrong. Or well, eight million windows appear that don't want to. So I'll do it one more time. Hopefully, I won't do it. Annoying. All right, this is my model. That's what I'm going to be printing. I don't know. I shouldn't select it really. Um, there you go. Really ugly edges there from catch. I can't be bothered cleaning them up. I can, and you know all these weird. Um, when you do extrusions or inner extrusions in Maya, you get these weird like, diagonal bits. Like you get these mad like spiky things here all over the shop. Um, I just manually, I don't know if you can see any of them there, these kind of crazy spiky things, but I don't even worry about some of that stuff. I don't care. Don't concern yourself about every little detail. I mean, it's just metal with plastic we're talking about. Anyway, I've done my own little stands here and there. I've actually raised, which one did I raise? This one here because um, it wasn't actually touching the the plastic before. I've noticed it's still not quite touching it so um, I'm just going to move the verts up a bit just to make sure that you know it touches my model. It's just mainly about grip really. Um, I should probably make the bases bigger because if the head smacks into it printing it could break it but for the purposes of now, um, I'm not too fast. Alright, so I'm just going to export that. Export all. And make sure you're on OBJ here. And then you click here. And I'm just going to click 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, whatever. The usual nonsense. And then I just go to my desktop and click export all. Wait for it to do the little spinning thing. It's done it. So now I just come into Cura. Open up Cura. Note my settings. 0 0.06, uh, 1.2, 1.2, 35, support type everywhere, platform type um, none, or platform adhesion. Load my model, it's 111 OBJ. Wait for it to load. You know, it's going to be a little while, but whatever. So we just wait it out. There it is. So we've got the, it's upside down, whatever. Back to front. Um, so I'll click on it. Rotate, rotate in 90 degrees. Now be careful that you do it exactly 90 degrees. For some reason, Cura sometimes throws up 89 degrees or something bizarre like that. I've no, I don't really know why. For whatever reason, it's pretty annoying when it does that. Or if you don't want to do it like that, you can click lay flat. I think there, that lay flat. But it takes too long. It has to figure it out. Why not? Why don't you just figure it out earlier and save the time? So we come down here, scale it up because I want it bigger, so look for the largest one which is obviously going to be the length here which I normally do 110, 110, whoops, yeah this is another thing I don't like about Cura, it seems to want to figure out re resizing on every single type entry, you know, why, why can't I just type my value and click enter just for the developers, it would be nice if you could just change that rather than it you, you know, figuring it out stuff when you're actually deleting it. Just can't highlight the box either, I don't think. No, you can't. So you're stuck doing it the long way anyway. 110, enough ranting. Um, there you go, there's the model. I'm just going to rotate it to face me when it prints because I like looking at it. No other reason than that. 180 degrees. Whatever, there you go. Making sure everything's touching, flat. Now you can go here and do the layer mode if you really want to see how it will print just to make sure it's all good and that you've got enough thickness and um, I know for a fact it will print fine so I'm not even going to bother wasting my time going through that um, and that's it, so you wait for this thing up here to finish calculating um, how long it's going to do it and how much filament and stuff like that and then you click save so I always get this message, print one at a time, mode disabled, blah blah blah, and all that. don't really care. It doesn't concern me, I'm not printing more than one anyway. And if I was printing more than one, then I'll just merge them as one in my own and then print them out afterwards. Because it's all about the head, kind of running into it the second time it prints the second object. Alright, there you go, it's done. So you click here, save. And now it's saving, we've got the little bar again. Blah blah blah. Wait, wait, wait.
We're just waiting for the little dialogue box kind of down here. <sighs> Come on, mate. I did click save it, right? Yeah. Hurry up, mate. Is it saved? I don't know. Did I even click the button? Yeah, I did. There you go. The box has come up, saved as 11111 G code. So I'll click eject. And then it does its spinning thing because Apple is really useless at ejecting stuff. Sometimes it takes forever. Anyway, I can now eject the card. Fine. And it says here 14 hours, 4 minutes, 4.25 meters of whatever. So remember that because I'm going to be teaching you a different method of loading it. So, um, so 4.25 meters. All right. So now I'm going to go to the, oh, to the back of my monitor, whip out the card, which is this one here. This is the one that comes with it. I'm still using the same one. You don't really need many cards. You may as well save the files. And that's it. So I'm going to go to the printer now.